The next talk is by Dr. Sunita Dube. She is going to talk on how to judge HPF progression with confidence for long-term patient management and decision making. Uh, thank Shishmita, you. you can come. Join okay, us. so at the outset, I would like to thank Zais for giving me this opportunity. As we know, glaucoma is a disease of deterioration, and glaucomatous progression is almost 10 times faster than the normal rate of decay of visual function with age. So rate of progression varies from slow to moderate to rapid in glaucoma patients. As in, you can see in this diagram, there's some loss of ganglion cells due to aging. And we know that the younger patients is, are at a higher risk of functional loss at the same rate of progression as compared to the older individuals. And a rapid rate of progression can lead to blindness if not detected and treated aggressively. So the best way to manage glaucoma is to determine the rate at which the disease is changing. So progression, I would say, would, should be uh, assessed on both structure and function, and clinical evaluation of the optic disc on the baseline and follow-up examination still remains the gold standard, and you should look for the thinning of the NRR uh, and enlargement of RNFL defects in the follow-up visits. OCT is an objective and quantitative uh, method which is again a pop has get, get, is getting popularity. However, it cannot be used in very advanced glaucoma because of the floor effect. Visual field testing has been the gold standard in tracking functional loss and assessing progression. Earlier, uh, we used to uh, just we, uh, we used to be interested in finding out whether progression has happened or not. But now, with the new software we can even find out the rate at which the disease is changing, which is very important. However, progression is usually evident if the perimetric testing is performed at a reasonable test intervals for a number of years. So why we require to do multiple tests? Because if you uh, see a patient with rapid progression, say two decibels per year, the time required to detect change is five years if examination is performed only once a year, 2.5 years if it is performed twice a year, and 1.7 years if the examinations are performed three times per year. So increasing the frequency of visual field test definitely helps to detect progression faster. And the consensus is that you do six fields in first two years uh, to detect progression. So to detect change, one needs to perform multiple tests, that is clear. And you need to rule out the false progression because as you can see, there's a lot of test retest variability. And as the retinal sensitivity decreases, the test retest variability increase. So to quote it as a progression, the point should fall outside the range of test retest variability, which is pretty high if the retinal sensitivity is low. So you need to establish an appropriate baseline and also rule out the learning curve, fatigue, and artifacts, which are pretty common uh, with uh, the, the patients. Now, uh, you can detect progression by event-based or trend-based analysis. So event-based approach identifies single event of significant change relative to the reference exam. So the criteria for progression is predefined. You can define whether you want to take five decibel or 10 decibel, two points or three points, and progression is confirmed when the changes in the visual field dips below the preset threshold level. So change from this baseline is pretty sensitive and it is used very often in detecting progression. The trend-based analysis shows the trend, as you can see here, and also the rate of change in future projection. And it is the linear regression of the global or local visual field sensitivity like PST uh, or uh, VFI now. So MD is uh, depicted as de decibel per year and VFI in percentage. So when you look at the field with uh, this uh, um, GPS software, quickly you can judge whether the patient is stable or progressing slowly or fast. Now in um, HVF stat pack, we have four formats. I'll be talking about these two, overview printout and guided progression analysis. So overview printout is very handy, and we do it in our clinics when the number of examinations are not too many. And you can just compare point by point. Each point you can compare, 
However, it is not standardized, uh, it can't pick up subtle changes and no statistical analysis available. And it has limited value in multiple fields. So now we have this GPA, which is used very extensively now. And it has been designed to identify and quantify progressions, but at least five fields are required to get the trend, trend analysis. And it uses VFI uh, uh, for the uh, analysis of progression. So it has three sections, the baseline exam at the top, so you have to set a very good baseline, and then the visual field history and trend in the middle with regression analysis and future projections. That is after five years, how much will be the damage if the disease progresses at the same rate? And then the current exam at the bottom with progression analysis plot and GPA alert as the positive, uh, as a uh, possible progression or likely progression. So uh, you should remember this, if it's an open triangle, that means the degree of deterioration is less than 5%. If it is half field triangle, that means a significant deterioration at, has occurred in two consecutive tests, which is suggestive of possible progression. And solid triangle, that means the significant deterioration has occurred in three consecutive tests. So uh, like in this picture, you can see that it is showing as possible progression and you see these half field triangles. So this is one of my patients who is progressing not so fast, it is a slow progressor, it's 1.7% per year. And you see over a period of time, the trend line is more or less straight, it is uh, not very uh, steep. But in the later years, there are three points which have progressed uh, significantly in you know, more than three consecutive tests, two consecutive tests, and you get this uh, GPA alert as likely progression. So that means you need to uh, change the treatment uh, line for this patient. Similarly, in the other eye also. In contrast, this patient, you see this patient has progressed very fast and almost the rate of progression is 16.7%. And when you follow these patients over a period of time, when the MD crosses 20 decibels, then there's sudden dip in VAPI, and then you won't be able to do, you will not get that alert or event progress, uh, event analysis, you will not uh, get whether uh, it's you know, possible or uh, likely progression, and then you have to just go through it or just uh, look at individual uh, fields. Uh, one should remember that once the visual field has deteriorated and you have inter done intervention, and the visual field has stabilized, you have to set a new baseline. And you can see in this patient that after trabeculectomy, the, uh, the progression has kind of uh, slowed down just 0.1% per year, and then with a new baseline, you are able to follow up this patient. Uh, we just heard about the CETA, uh, other strategies, and there's a strong similarity between the VFI findings of three uh, thresholding strategy, and uh, uh, th therefore, the company has expanded to allow free mixture of CETA testing strategies, that you can get all the three strategies in uh, one printout. And uh, so there is a possibility that if the patient is not able to devote that much of time and not able to perform CETA standard tests, then you, in between you can get the CETA faster. If you feel that the patient has been stable and uh, you want to perform multiple tests, then you can do it, although there are some differences as we just discussed, and you can't directly compare uh, these tests. Visual field uh, changes may be the most important and the only evidence for progression in advanced glaucoma because the optic nerve uh, deterioration is also too much and OCT is also not useful in advanced glaucoma. However, in advanced glaucoma, you have to change the stimulus size from size three to size five because the, a test location with a sensitivity of 15 decibel in size three shows 20 decibel in size five, so it increases the dynamic range and the test retest variability is also low, and you can follow up the patient for a long time. So this is trend is a sh uh, two strategy which we follow in advanced glaucoma when the fixation is also involved, and as you can see here. Even in very, very advanced glaucoma, in 10-2 size 3, you see there's hardly anything remaining here. 
but when you switch to size 5, you can still follow up the patient uh, for a few years. So apply this rate of progression in clinical management. When it is a straight line, you just maintain the therapy. When it is moderately risk progress, risky progression, you step up the treatment. And when it is dangerously steep, then you have to change your treatment radically. Just one or two uh, patients I can uh, show. This is a 45-year-old male presented to us uh, 10 years in 2010. And that time you can see there are uh, you know, changes in the RNFL and uh, uh, optic disc and with the corroborating changes in the optic uh, in the visual fields. And uh, this was a patient with NTG and he hardly showed progression over a period of time. And now recently after COVID, he came after two years and you see there are remarkable changes in the, uh, the disc, uh, the thinning of neuroretinal remere, it has become a notch. There are um, um, disc hemorrhages in both the eyes, the right and left eye, although the, the pressures were normal. And uh, RNFL also showed nine microns deterioration uh, in both the eyes. And the visual field, if you compare from 10, uh, 2010 to 2022, uh, there is some deterioration. Although the, the progression is not so fast, he is a patient with normal tension glaucoma. So uh, ultimately, uh, like we investigated him for NTG and he was found to have obstructive sleep apnea. Another patient uh, uh, who, whose pressure was controlled. So nowadays, I see a lot of disc hemorrhages on normal pressures and uh, enlargement of the RNFL. Uh, and uh, when the disc hemorrhage resolved, you see the, this development of deepening of this RNFL defect, 10 microns decrease in RNFL thickness, and corroborating changes in the visual fields. So uh, to conclude, true progression should be differentiated from variability in testing. The change should be statistically significant and reproducible, and you have to correlate your disk findings, your um, OCT findings, and field findings in sound clinical judgment for interpretation of visual field in diagnosis as well as assessing progression. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions uh, for Dr. Sumati? Or any comments? Mm -hmm. So I, I think progression, detecting progression is actually very important. Uh, I think that's after the diagnosis of glaucoma, that is the most important thing that we look at, whether the glaucoma is prog progressing or not progressing. And Dr. Sunita has uh, very nicely actually summarized, uh, uh, you know, different ways of uh, detecting progression, and most of the time we are depending on the GPA. So Dr. Sunita, do you use any other method other than the GPA uh, to detect progression, or does that serve your purpose? Uh, from do you, I mean, what is your favorite way of detecting progression? Do you depend entirely on GPA? Or there's another method that you also yeah, consider. Yeah, I use. Uh, so I can I, I have a question, please? Can I have a question, please? Yes, please. Sir, J just, just a sec. So, yeah, you were saying. Please carry on. I no, have to uh, answer. You were saying something. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, Sari is asking which is the best software you use for yeah, progression. Yeah, I, I have been using GPA software, and uh, both the event it has both event and trend analysis. But you can use that VFI trend analysis only when you have done five visual fields. So, uh, but when the patient, when you newly diagnose a patient, the first two, three times, you can just do point by point analysis clinically. Just take an overview printout and just check point by point how much is the progression. And there's Hodap, Parrish, Anderson criteria. Because of the paucity of time, I couldn't show that. Yeah. But you know, deterioration, they have defined what is deepening of scotoma, what is enlargement of scotoma. So I think that's a very good classification, and you just go by that and. And yeah. very advanced then. In advanced, 10-2, uh, and 10-2 uh, also size 3, and then moving to size 5. So yeah, I think so that's kind of the summary of most of what uh, we people do. Your question, please. Sir, in early glaucomas, suspected glaucomas, we have a lot of confusion in the structural function relationship. Sometimes we find defect in the uh, either uh, in the inferior quadrant or uh, uh, superior quadrant of the disc. But in the uh, autoperimetry report, it comes as a normal. With an and IOP is also within the normal limit. So uh, that time it becomes very difficult for us to 
clinch the diagnosis or to follow the patient? What is your guidance?